Thanks for tuning in. I'm Gus Corduroy here with the Little Rascals and today we are talking about team information sharing and decision making. So first things first, aren't teams great at sharing information? Of course. Yes. After all, isn't that the whole point of being in teams? Oh, yeah, totally. Not quite. Let's look at the most common example of where teams go completely wrong in decision making. The common information effect and the hidden profile. In a team, there are three basic ways that information can be shared before the team even meets for the first time. We have non-overlapping information here on the left, which occurs when no one in the team has the same information, and we have three completely different viewpoints. We also have distributed or partial overlap, which is in the middle, is the same information is shared and some information is individually held. On the right here, we have fully shared information, which is the last of the three types, and all team members have identical information and it is fully shared. In a perfect world, the first situation is the most preferable. Everyone brings completely unique information, everyone completely shares their information, and the team makes a better judgment than any member could possibly make individually. But wait, isn't that what happens in teams? Isn't everyone going to share that information? Yeah. 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 Not exactly. A simple definition for the common information effect is that information that is held by all members on a team is more influential than information held by individual team members. So what can this mean? Well, when teams come together, they're coming together for a specific purpose. We want teams to make better decisions than an individual can make because team members all have different unique knowledge. If a team is only going to discuss what they have in common, why should you even have a team? One person can make that decision. Unfortunately, due to the common information effect, teams spend more time concentrating on the information that they all know and share. It gets discussed more and for longer. Teams spend more time trying to get along and to find out what they have in common with one another rather than finding out what they can each bring to the table, which leads us to hidden profiles. A hidden profile is a superior candidate whose positive qualities are only partially known. When information is partially distributed, the hidden profile is especially common, like in our visual example. Here we have Mr. Yellow and Mr. Blue. Mr. Yellow and Mr. Blue are the hiring managers for a company deciding whether to make Mr. Pink or Mr. Red their new employee. In this case, the pink candidate has three positive pieces of information about them, A, B, and C. But the red candidate has four pieces of positive information, A, B, C, and D. According to the common information effect, even though that the red candidate is clearly superior, Mr. Yellow and Mr. Blue are going to select the pink candidate. They're going to select the pink candidate because they both know more positive information about Mr. Pink than Mr. Red, and they're going to judge Mr. Pink as superior and spend most of their time talking about how Mr. Pink is superior. And they do this instead of sharing their information and quickly come to the conclusion that Mr. Red is indeed superior. They, they'll talk about what they have in common, and Mr. Red will continue to be unemployed. How can we help teams share information? Let's take a look at some examples. So next time, poor Mr. Red won't be left out and still unemployed. Here's some things that don't work. Here are a couple solutions you might be going over in your head that don't solve anybody's problems. Increase the amount of discussion. If we're only discussing information we all already know, then what's the point? Increasing team size. When we have more people, we try even harder to get along and share more common information. And that is what we don't need. Increasing the information load. We just, be, just because we have more information doesn't mean we'll share it better. Pre-discussion polling. Polling a group is absolutely not useful. This just makes everyone see that they all hold the same opinion and decide that further discussion is useless. So never do pre-discussion polling. When teams come together, it is a good idea to make one team member, often the leader of your team, an information manager. They should lead your team to do the following. The more team members repeat common information, the more likely they are 
to never move on to unshared information. Therefore, the leader should be persistent in bringing up unshared information and reintroducing uncommon information even after the team may have disregarded it. Leaders should portray the task as a problem with evidence for a solution and clearly state that they are not interested in personal opinion or judgment. Considering alternatives fully, leaders should make sure that the team fully discusses each alternative before moving on to a new subject. When people know that certain team members have specific useful information that is unique to them, they are more likely to pay attention to those team members and their unique information. Suspending initial judgment. Make sure that team members know not to have a judgment before discussion begins. The whole reason for the common information effect is that people bring their own biases to the table and make sure that those are all that get discussed. Lastly, one of the most important things is building trust. When team members trust each other more, they are more open to sharing information regardless of how they think other team members will feel about it. So now we have some advice on how to share information in teams. How can we use that information to come to a decision? Group decision making is a process. Sometimes the parts that make up that process, information is flawed. But once information is all well shared and everyone has the best information available, a group will definitely, definitely come to the best decision then. Right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Not exactly. What are some biases a group may have when making decisions? One bias that often presents itself, conformity pressure. When people want acceptance in a group, they try to figure out a way to get it. Unfortunately, this often leads to a trend in groups for people to be pressured to have a single accepted view, and people with a contradictory view often get shut out or ostracized. Does anybody, can anybody think of any others, the, any biases? Group think. Group think? Excellent. Groupthink. Groupthink occurs when team members place consensus and getting along ahead of all other priorities, including making a good decision. In groupthink, the desire to agree becomes so dominant, it overrides our natural ability to think realistically about a situation. One of my personal favorites, the Abilene Paradox. The Abilene Paradox is a unique situation. In the Abilene Paradox, no group member actually favors the final choice. However, everyone thinks that everyone else but them likes the decision at that time the decision is made. Group polarization. Polarization is an incredibly dangerous phenomenon. In groups, we tend to come to more extreme decisions than we might actually necessarily have as individuals. Whether it's more risky or more cautious, groups tend to feel more strongly about issues than individuals. Can anybody think of any other names that group polarization is called? Risky shift. Risky awesome. shift. Risky shift is great. I also heard uh, cautious shift out there. That's another name for it, so you guys want to keep that in mind. We also have uneven participation, also known as social lo loafing. And this is something we all have been familiar with at one time or another, even if we don't realize it. In a group, about 10 to 20% of group members do about 70 to 80% of all the talking. Simply put, in a group, people don't work as hard as they do alone. We rely on other group members to do the work for us, rather than to do it ourselves. So what are a few useful things we can do to improve our group decision making? One important thing to do is carefully monitor team size. Larger teams are more likely to focus on common information and fall prey to biases we described. People also grow <laughs> more hesitant and intimidated in larger teams. Playing devil's advocate. It helps to encourage teams to have a devil's advocate, encouraging contradictory viewpoints. Even having someone express a doubt may encourage others to raise their own doubts or concerns. Having a structured d discussion. Having specific discussion guidelines and principles tends to improve solutions and increase time spent trying to solve problems. It is important to emphasize continuously looking for new solutions, protecting individuals from criticisms, from contrary opinions, and to mention all possible solutions before evaluating them. Set clear goals. It's important to be very clear about the circumstances surrounding a decision and the specific ways different aspects of each solution should be weighted. 
All group members, any time a decision is suggested, should listen to all feedback and make it clear that they are open to hearing it. Finally, when your team has completely finished all discussion and it's finally time to select a solution, a team should keep their votes private. Differing opinions are much easier to express when you don't expect to be judged by them. So remember guys, communication is a collaborative effort. It doesn't matter what one, or what one of us or all of us bring to the table, we all have to work together. That's the point of working in a team. Our own natural biases can make even the most effective team a disaster at decision making. Here's the key to producing quality decisions, creating and implementing effective team decision making procedures. All decisions can still go wrong, but effectively using these strategies will help you make better decisions and keep bad decisions and risks to a minimum. Like I said, I'm Gus Corduroy signing out for the Little Rascals. Have a good day.